Hi again, and welcome to Animated Alan's Triumphant Return to Edutainment. Uh, this time I've got a budget now, so we've got a whole range of characters, such as Real Alan. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. And Real Alan, but in different clothes. And as requested, here is the computer science revision video extravaganza masterpiece that not even gods can rival its sheer awesomeness video. Trademarked. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. So, let's all talk about the elephant in the room, and I do not mean Jack's inability to hand in homework, what? And that is internet privacy. Many websites like Twitter and Facebook require users to provide personal information in order to set up an account, and these websites have a privacy agreement that you have to accept to get an account, but if you're like me, you'll probably skip over that completely and tick it. But do you know what you're agreeing to? These companies could sell you information such as buying habits to other organisations who could use it to send you things such as targeted adverts or spam emails. Companies can do loads of things for your info as long as they stay within the privacy agreement that you supposedly read. Users can take steps to make their info more private by changing their privacy settings on social media, but some websites like Facebook make their privacy settings so hard to understand or even find. Thanks Zuckerberg! Stakeholders are people, either individuals or groups of people, that are affected by a scenario that involves technology. A stakeholder could be anyone, a company, its employees, hardware suppliers, a shop that sells a said product, its customers, or even you! You could be a stakeholder too! Each group of stakeholders have different priorities to others and they can all be affected either positively or negatively to a situation. For example, Blue here, Ayo, my name is Blue, wants to buy some very specific output devices. So he went to a very respectable website that sold them, but they're way too pricey for good old Blue. But there is a solution. He saw an ad pop up for a brand new and somewhat dubious website that's selling what Blue wants for dirt cheap. So obviously Blue would want to buy it from there. But what are the implications? After Blue did some research on this new website, he found out that it's only been up for a very, very short time and the terms of services seem very odd for a legit website. Here, Blue is a stakeholder. He could choose the respected website that which he knows he's legit but spends way much more money than he wanted to, or choose the new website and possibly be scammed out of his money. In addition, the respected website is also a stakeholder. If the new website was actually legit, then they will have a brand new competitor selling similar products at a much lower price, reducing their sales. <gasps> what I'm trying to say is that it's all very complicated, isn't it? We're so sorry, skeleton, you're so misunderstood. You only want to socialize. But I don't think we should. Definition of censorship the suppression or prohibition of any parts of books, films, news, etc. that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. Thanks, Blue. Internet censorship is when someone tries to control what other people can access on the internet. Censorship can come in many forms, such as schools restricting access to games or other inappropriate websites so kids can remain focused. But some governments use censorship to restrict access to certain information. To show this, we're going on a worldwide trip to some of the countries with the strictest censorship rules. In North Korea, only 4% of people can access the global internet, with access restricted to higher level officials or select university students. North Korea also have a natural intranet, which is heavily censored and a monitored service. Country roads, take me home. Cuba is well known for having its internet only available at government controlled access points, and all activity online is monitored through IP blocking, keyword filtering, and browsing history checking. China is infamous for its censorship. 
The government restricts access to websites which are critical of the government as well as banning many foreign websites such as Twitter and YouTube. Whoa, 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 can't we just strike a deal? Negotiations are for capitalists. Victory is a dish best served communist. So, imagine you're playing Minecraft, happily playing some Skywars as you do, then someone says something mean to you like, your mum sells plastic bags. What do you do then? <coughs> this is called trolling, which is a form of cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is when someone uses some platform or social media like Instagram or a game chat to harm or hurt someone else. This can cause quite serious distress to people, making them feel excluded and lonely due to the fact that people can stay anonymous online. Of course, there are a few ways to prevent people from harassing you, such as blocking them on social media, therefore making sure that they can't access your account or leave you messages. Another thing you can do is call them out for being a wet wipe by saying things like, oh I bet you're too much of a wimp to say this to my face, because you know that they're not actually going to come up to you and say something like, oh hi dad. You're a degenerate, I should never have adopted you. <laughs> the digital divide is caused when some people The digital divide is caused when some people have greater access to technology than others. In general, residents of richer countries tend to have better access due to well-developed facilities than someone in rural Africa. But it doesn't always matter on geographical location. Some people just don't have enough money to splash out on the latest phones slash laptops or they just don't know how to use them because they didn't grow up with all these devices around them like our generation did. Therefore, all these people can be shut out of the opportunities they offer and left at a heavy disadvantage. There are many solutions to these problems. There are courses for people to get a better understanding on how their devices work as well as charities helping people to get better access to technology, just like one laptop per child. Spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom